as crude as that sounds, somebody will jump for $20 an hour, right? Somebody does have a price. There's no, there's no guessing. There's absolutely no guessing. You're not guessing for, I think it's this, I, th I hope it's that, there's nothing like that. You're in this game of real estate that there shouldn't be a guess. What is up you guys, Matt McKeever here and so we got another Casey video. So first things first, if you enjoy these Casey videos, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button if you're new to my channel and otherwise, sharing is caring. If you enjoy these videos, share them. Share them on your social media. But in this video, Casey dives deep into the analysis and really breaks down some of the numbers for real estate investing and trying to analyze a multifamily investment property. So you're gonna to wanna to break out your pens, your papers, your notebooks, whatever, because he really gets into the numbers. Again, thank you, Casey, so much for taking the time to shoot these videos with myself and Adam. And otherwise, guys, let's just get into it. All of us uh, as landlords, larger, um, a little bit larger, let's say the the 30 to 80 units, they're always looking for, for products like this. They're always, right? It's a yield game. So this game of buying uh, cash flow is great. Um, so let's go back. Let's talk about how you analyze, right? So I bought that 65 unit in Cambridge. Um, I bought for 7 million. So let's, 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 let's bring this number down. So if you guys are buying, let's say, a, a, like a $1 million property, okay? So let's say it's gonna be eight and eight unit, let's say, or it's a 10 plex. Okay, very, very simple. Let's do the straight numbers. So a million dollars, let's just say your expenses, remember I mentioned that it's 40%, usually an expense is like minus your debt carrying, which is your mortgage. All that should be about 40%. What this, what's this entail? I'm gonna run through it, but Matt or Adam, you tell me what I'm missing, okay? Because this is off, yeah. off my head, at a whim. Uh, so what, what, what it will encompass is that you have your r &M, your, uh, your property management, uh, insurance, tax, uh, cleaning, landscaping, um, what else? That's about it, right? We'll go on, I'll go into a little bit more detail. So let's talk about top line, okay? So we talked about real estate, we talked about your different strategies, and now let's talk about rent, okay? Your $1 million 10 plex or 8 plex or 12 plex, whatever market you're in, it'll dictate how many how many units within that building, that $1 million. That, let's just talk about rent. If it's, it's $1,000 per unit, for simplicity, it's $1,000, okay? So that's $10,000 a month, right? So you wanna know what that value add is, what the market rent, okay? So, again, I'm gonna generalize this so that you can use your numbers for, I know some of your viewers are from Canada to Atlanta to like Netherlands. I don't know how many everywhere. everywhere. Okay, so you have to take a look at your own area I'm giving my numbers to you like the, like that 7 million, but if you're buying somewhere in say Atlanta or uh, Florida your numbers are gonna be different So you have to do your analysis differently for your different sectors or uh, your different geographic lo location Okay, so you have to know your numbers and then you have to analyze you can't just analyze one You're not buying a you buy a car and you don't test drive other cars? No, you're gonna test drive maybe three or four different types of cars, see which one feels good. You're buying a property, you have to look at the numbers, right? So let's talk about that. Going back, I'm digressing. It's $10,000 per month. How many units? That's fine. Take a look at it. How much is the potential rent? So you're gonna put some ghost ads, okay? So put some ghost ads. If you think that you're, you're gonna get more because of granite countertop, put that in your ad, put two ads in. Put three ads and put four ads. Whatever you need to do to get that market analysis, you're gonna be doing that. So what this means is that, okay, it's $1,000, you're gonna put it there for 1,000. You're gonna upgrade that to, now it's gonna be 1,200. That's your market rent, everybody's doing 12. Now you wanna upgrade even more. You're gonna over renovate to get that better tenant. Put a ghost ad there, 1250. You haven't even bought that property yet, but you're putting ghost ads out. Right? You don't have to put location. You don't have to say, I'm at 20 Elgin Street. You're gonna be saying, I'm at 123 Main Street in Hamilton, whatever. Now you can put two ads there, but you're just gonna put intersection. You're gonna say, hey, my, this is $1,200 market. I'm gonna go higher. I'm gonna go 1250 now. How much is that gonna be? How many people am I gonna get, right? So how many calls? So now you know your market. Now you show your investors, hey, this is what I'm doing. Okay, now you can say, hey, these are all the calls. And then there's different ways of scheduling calls, calling them back, making sure you get a flood. But that's something different when you're doing property management, when you're doing viewings, things like that. So again, top line, know that rental, 
okay? So that, that $10,000 per month, know it. That's $10,000 current, what's that potential, right? So now it's gonna be 12,000, okay? For example, it's 12,000 a month. Now you're, now you're comfortable with that, so you're analyzing, you're making sure that that rent can support it, okay? So know that first, no, there's no guessing. There's absolutely no guessing. You're not guessing for, I think it's this, I, th I hope it's that, there's nothing like that. You're in this game of real estate that there shouldn't be a guess. You should know it. So you're putting these ads out. You're talking to people. You're going and putting a baseball cap on and saying, hey, I wanna know um, if this is available, a one bedroom, a two bedroom, and you're pretending to be a tenant, you're seeing the competition. I told that to you guys before, do that. Okay, so you've got that. Going down to the expense side, so it's about 40%. My market is 40, it depends. Let's talk about different locales. So if you're talking about, um, say, property tax, okay? Property tax in Ontario is gonna be different in different cities, okay? So a Waterloo is gonna be different from a Hamilton, it's gonna be different from a London, it's gonna be different from a Toronto, right? It might be lower in Toronto because there's just more people, right? It's gonna be different in Vaughan, it's gonna be different in Orangeville, okay? So know that. That expense line item is gonna be different everywhere, okay? So Hamilton, when I was in Hamilton, and then I looked at Orangeville, those property taxes are going to be a little bit more expensive. For whatever reason, they're actually more than here, okay? If I'm looking at Cambridge, Kitchener, Waterloo, Hamilton's more expensive on the property tax. Orangeville is more expensive, okay? That's why I brought that up. So you're comparing within that geographic location, that locale, property tax, okay? So is it maybe it is more expensive. Maybe your rents can support it because your rents are going to be higher, okay? So know that. Know, know what, what area. So if you're in the States, know that, okay? You're gonna compare, f let's say, five different properties in the same locale, Hamilton, or let's say, whatever, uh, Atlanta, Georgia. You're gonna look at that. You're gonna look at five of these properties, very, very similar. It could be an eight-plex, a 10-plex, or 12-plex, or 14. Whatever you're looking at, is that what, that's what you can look at. So you have property tax, insurance, you can get quotes for that. You can look at R&M. So R&M, which is repairs and maintenance, you're gonna look at a span of five years. So you're gonna do pro forma, you're gonna do yours, okay? Your pro forma uh, on your numbers that you researched. You're gonna be looking at on an old, let's say an old building that had, needs a lot of maintenance, you're gonna be looking at 80% of one month's rent, that's gonna be a one year expense, okay? So you can, I'm hoping that you guys are you know, taking notes or something, but that's, that's your homework. I'm gonna, I'm gonna spit this out, you guys do your own homework. So it's 80% for something that's older, 50% for something that's mid-range, not too much work, and uh, uh, something like an 89 Rideau for my newer building in London, I'll probably do 20% or even down to 10% because it's not much maintenance, it's a new built building, I'm flipping it out. So know your, uh, know your prices, uh, that it's, it's gonna translate from an, Percentage to a number, to numbers to a five-year pro forma. That's your take. You can do 5%. Whatever you do, if, you, if, if some, some agents are, or some investors always do 555, for example. They'll do a 5% R&M, a 5% uh, vacancy allowance, a 5% something else. I don't remember, but they always, I've heard that 555, five, 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 right? But I just like to do a little bit more uh, detailed so I know exactly what my numbers are going to be. So I do a 20, 50, 80, depending on good, medium, and bad types of units, okay? That's just inside units, all right? Um, so that's one of the, I'm forgetting some other uh, item is that, the, sorry, the top item is when I'm buying for $1 million, take a look at any kind of deferred maintenance. So if it's, there's a deferred maintenance, um, uh, let's say all the balconies that need to get done, so am I buying at a $1 million, is that fair market value? So am I buying at a 900,000 and it needs $200,000 of work, so now it's at 1.1 million. So know that price, okay? So if you're buying a building that doesn't need any work, it's a million dollars, that's gonna be better than buying a 900,000, sorry, I think my math is wrong, 900,000 and putting $200,000 of work, now it's at 1.1. So you have to do apples to apples, okay? So let's go back down to the expense items, right? So you have R&M, you have insurance, um, you have property tax, you have, um, let's say property management. Property management costs uh, that you have to pay for a building is three to five percent for a commercial and about eight to 12 for residential. It could be higher, it could be lower. It depends on what you want, what you negotiate with your property manager. They could provide a superior service and more 
um, better service, so you might pay a little bit more. Or you just need the no frills type of thing that maybe you just want um, maybe a 6% on a residential and then you'll do the other stuff, okay? So that's for property management. If you're doing cleaning, I know you guys are asking about cleaning. Um, what I do is I pay Tammy, I pay uh, Tina, I pay Margaret, these are my super slash cleaners. I pay them about 180 to about 200 or like about $200 a month for cleaning. And what this is is that they're cleaning the hallways, walking around uh, for an hour on a Monday, an hour on a Friday. So I sandwich the weekends, okay? So it's an hour, an hour. It's $20 an hour. Uh, what this means is that it's, it's a clean. I've done it. I'll show them, okay? So you get down and dirty, get your boots on, and you actually do the cleaning with them, okay? So I can be well, talking to them, you know, brainstorming or letting them know how I show, giving them uh, suggestions, showing them what, you know, what to say, how to say it, uh, tell the prospective tenants of the benefits, and th this is what they're gonna be using, and while I'm doing that, I'm cleaning, okay? And by the, t by the time I'm done, like I've mopped floors, I've done, I swept, I usually sweep, mop, sweep, and then when I'm done, I say, hey, look at the time, it's one hour, all right? I pay you $20 an hour. Right? So at that time, the Monday, Friday, Monday, Friday, uh, for that month, that's what I, I want them to do. Right? So it's not, I'm not overpaying them, I'm not underpaying them. Okay? And then they get spot cleaning. Anything that, let's say, a little two-year-old threw up on the, on the hallways or whatever, they're gonna do that, clean up, that cleaning, that's $20 an hour. Okay? I expect that to be done within 20 minutes, I still pay them an hour. Uh, a couch is thrown, like somebody dumped a couch, my tenants threw uh, some furniture away, 20 bucks, right? So every time there's something that needs to be done, they can just take a picture of it and send it to me, right? That's their extra money, right? Some people say that, because I, I sort of framed it, I was talking to another, another investor, I go, yeah, it's like my, my, my cleaners, my supers, they'll jump for me for $20 an hour, right? As crude as that sounds, somebody will jump for $20 an hour, right? Somebody does have a price, I'll jump for maybe $40 or $60 an hour. You tell me to jump, do 10 jumping jacks. Right? I'll say, hey, Tammy, jump for $20. She'll jump. I'll jump for maybe $40 or $60. Don't think that it's bad. I'll pay, some people will pay $100 just to watch another person jump, right? Maybe that person is jumping and putting a ball in a hoop, right? And they're jumping and they have a contract for like $10 million. You're still watching somebody jump, okay? If you really think about it, bottom line is I'm watching like a Kawhi Leonard jump, right? But I'm paying $100 a, a ticket for, for watching Kawhi Leonard or uh, LeBron James, right, jump. So as crude as that sounds, she does have a price, right? I have a price that I will pay somebody to jump, right? So that's my, uh, that's my take. Somebody said it was kinda, you know, it sounds really weird that somebody will jump out for $20. Well, you know, people do have a price. What else? Move in and outs, we talked about renovation, we talked about two, two and a half year uh, payback period renovation. Um, and this is, this is what I'm talking about. And so why do you choose that two and a half year? Yeah, good question, right? I want to get payback right away for what, how I renovate. So when I'm going through a, uh, when I'm going through a building inspection uh, with my professional engineer, um, I know there's gonna be upfront costs to do balconies, roof, boiler, stuff like that. Anything inside the unit that I'm gonna be renovating, I don't want to overspend and I don't wanna be putting too much money into it. Now, sometimes I will spend a little bit more. It could be a four year payback because let's say the kitchen cabinets or um, everything is done, like I'm gonna to have to re-drywall, right? So it could cost a little bit more. It could be like 10, 12, $14,000. But I know when I'm doing my inspections, prior to that, I know that I have, out of the 36 units, I'm gonna have a 10 unit gut job. I put that in. Right, because my investors need to know, and I need to know as well. Right, that I'm going to have this amount of money, these ten units that I'm going to be putting in an extra, um, say, eight thousand dollars. Okay, let's say I'm going to be spending normally, let's say six to seven thousand. Now I'm going to spend an extra eight thousand dollars. How much is that going to be? I'm going to have to make sure that I have that money for it. Right, so everything shouldn't be a guess. You should never guess. You say, okay, well, you know what, uh, these ten units. I'm hoping that they don't leave or hoping that they do leave. No, no, you know that there's 10 units that these are complete get jobs. Uh, they've been there for 20 years. If they leave, I'm gonna have to use that money.
okay so you have to be cognizant you have to be smart about that because your people are counting out like on that because you've done your analysis so let's talk about garbage landscaping all that as well so usually I'm gonna outsource that okay so I get a bulk discount because I'm giving all my properties to one contractor one contractor is gonna do it all so let's say it's five properties within a driving distance I'm gonna get that person to do it all and hopefully he treats me nice he gives me a good price because I'm giving him a bulk um, he's giving me a bulk discount I'm giving a whole bunch of properties right so on a property like something like this like let's say in Elgin uh, even my Linwood Lowther properties, I'm probably getting for a winter maintenance, it's about four to five hundred dollars, I think. Four to five hundred dollars, including salt, for, for per month. Um, and then it comes down slightly for the, for the summer. Okay, so I put that into, uh, into consideration as well. Um, a garbage disposal because these are commercial I'm gonna have to outsource that. Uh, recycling, I think I get, I, have, I, I think that I have to pay that as well. Uh, to the city, I'm not sure, but garbage definitely. It doesn't come um, part of the property tax and all of that. Again, utilities. So within that 40%, depending on your area, it's going to be different. You may have to pay for water, electricity, and gas, right? For the heating, water, and common area electricity. Some property owners want to offload it to the tenants, okay? So if they're going to offload it to the tenants, you have to know your market. All right, so your tenants may not want that. Um, they're going to compare, let's say, $1,200 to $1,200. Uh, you may have to underprice it by $50, right? So it'd be $1,150 because they have to pay the heat now, right? So does it make sense for that tenant to, to be paying $1,200 all-inclusive for the heat or $1,150 and now they have to pay for it, right? So you have to know that market. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. Right? But for in Canada, here in sort of the uh, Kitchen Waterloo area, it's usually heat is included, all right? Hydro is separate, all right? So if you want to separate all the utilities you can, it's that you're, you're going to find pushback from the tenants. No, I was just going to uh, ask about when we were upstairs, you kind of mentioned about how you talk to your investors or how you kind of, yep. uh, you know, attract investors or kind of your approach with that. I know that people would definitely love to okay. <laughs> your perspective at least on that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. When, when I network, it's usually I'm not networking um, in, in rain or those meetups.